In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the cybersecurity degree offering from the University of Melbourne. This will be part of a video series where I go through the most popular and most sought after cybersecurity degrees from Australian universities. So cybersecurity at the University of Melbourne seems to be only part of their master's degree. So they say they have two streams from the look of it. They've got the Masters of Information Technology or Masters of IT. That seems to be their technical side. They've got a Masters of Software Engineering, focuses on the technical and implementation side. They also have a Masters of Information Systems, uh, which focuses on the business and governance side. I've actually met and I know personally people who have gone through these degrees, so I can give you some insights on both the value of these degrees, the cost of this degree, and is it really worth it? Um, let's go through the subjects first. So let's start with the Masters of IT. So the Masters of IT claims to be the technical side of cybersecurity. So for me, when someone says this degree focuses on the technical side of cybersecurity, I expect to see courses that talks about penetration testing, network security, digital forensics, at the bare minimum. This is really what you want from a degree that claims to give you skills to get you to work in the cybersecurity industry. I don't want the degree to make you an expert on these topics, but at least introduce you to these topics with a certain level of competency. Actually, for the money that you pay for these degrees, you should expect to come out of them knowing what you're doing. So let's look at the Masters of IT. It seems to be a two years degree full-time, four years part-time. I don't really think the part-time option is available for international students. So if you're an international student, you will be looking at a full-time degree because that's part of your visa requirements. Um, in University of Melbourne, so these courses, whether it's the Master of IT or Master of Information Systems, um, it is two years degree. However, I think if you have, um, if you've done an undergraduate degree in IT or if you've got um, enough experience, they have what they call Recognition of Prior Learning, RPL. So you can, I think, do the same degree within one year. So you'll get credit for some of the subjects you've already done. Okay, so let's look at the um, page here. It says choose your specializations. I'm assuming we're gonna choose cybersecurity. Um, let's look at what will I study. Again, core subjects, programming, software development, algorithms, um, internet technology, database and information modeling. So again, these are classic undergraduate subjects. I would not expect these subjects to be part of a master's degree unless you're someone who has never done any IT or computer science before. Those are foundational subjects. They have nothing to do with cybersecurity. So again, the, the degree is called of ma uh, Masters of IT, so I think it makes sense for this to be there. Looking at the specializations, artificial intelligence, computing, cybersecurity, distributed computing, and special, and looks like special will be discontinued, human-computer interaction, again, just judging by the names of those specializations, like artificial intelligence, distributed computing, these are more geared toward academic research. So if you wanna work with an AI or distributed computing, you probably end up working in either a university in a research capacity, or in an R&D facility. Uh, Australia is not really known for uh, their research, so there aren't that many research opportunities in Australia. Uh, unlike the United States, for example, in the US, there is a bigger market for research and bigger funding. So let's look at cybersecurity. Um, let's click at the handbook course. So within the course, minor specialization. Again, I'm just trying to get to the cyber security. There it is, cyber security, 150 points credit. So it looks like it's a year and a half out of the two years you're specializing within cyber security. Structure, I'm just trying to see what subjects are included in the course. There it is. So again, the first four subjects are foundational um, computer science subjects, really. Um, cyber security specializations. Again, distributed systems has nothing to do with cyber security. Cryptography and security, great. So cryptography is really, will be more like a math kind of subject. So it will tell you what cryptography is, probably get you me knowing University of Melbourne. Homework will be something like, okay, here's a math problem, how you solve it. None of this is applicable in the real life. Yes, you need to 
know what cryptography is, you need to know what encryption is, but solving mathematical problems will not be part of your cybersecurity job. Again, it's good if you want to do research, if you want to do a PhD, you will need that type of stuff if you want to research that particular subject. In my undergraduate degree, I've done a degree in computer engineering and I've, I did so much math, uh, which would have been great if I wanted to do a PhD, but I didn't do a PhD. So I don't want to say it was useless, um, but um, it's not something that will translate directly to your job. Let's look at the electives. So electives is where I will expect more cyber subjects. Again, this is the master of IT. This is meant to be the technical track. Introduction to machine learning. Okay, information security consulting. This subject is also part of the information systems master's degree. Uh, looks like it just touches broadly on all the topics of cybersecurity. I've talked to someone who I worked with that did that degree and Look, the subject is basically just a high-level introduction of what security controls are, what's a firewall, what's a design. Not really what I would expect to be a sub... Well, not, not, not really what I would refer to as an in-depth subject. So it's a really broad subject. I mean, it's great. Um, as, a con as a consultant, you really need to have a strong background and a whole heap of topics. So I don't know how one subject will give you that. But nonetheless, um, the other subject is security and software testing. So the name of the subject is bit.g. Uh, I mean, security and software testing, there is little to no interaction between the two. Let's click on the subject and see what it's about. Again, it's part of their Masters of Engineering and Software. Yep, software testing makes sense that software testing is part of software engineering because software testing is all about testing the software program that you designed or being part of a big group of testers. Really has nothing to do with cybersecurity. I don't know why is this part of the security. Again, there is little to no information about the subject. It says, the scale and complexity of most softwares ensure that we achieve quantities and non-trivial. Yeah, look, this really is not a security subject, even that, even though it has the word security in it. Okay, let's look at the advanced specializations. Research, innovation, software project. Okay, there is a subject called security analytics and web security. So let's click at web security and see what that's about. Right, it talks about, that's good. It looks like it's a software security subject, just poorly named as web security. Um, the subject will examine some of the cybersecurity challenges faced during software implementation. Talks about the OS top 10, that's great. So the OS top 10 are a set of um, secu software security vulnerabilities that we look at. Um, the subject will discuss methods for mitigating risk with vulnerabilities in you know, remediating distributed denial of service, input validation, vulnerability scanning. So it looks like this is a good subject. Uh, web security, the name is dodgy, but looks like this subject is basically a software security subject. Good subject, um, not bad. Not what I would describe as a high level or a master's degree level subject, more like an entry level subject. Um, security analytics, I expect that to be Okay. This subject will introduce the types of data sources used in detection threats. Okay, so in the industry, uh, we use what we refer to as SIEM. Uh, SIEM is Security Events and Information Monitoring System, basically the likes of Splunk as an example, so where we parse the logs and create detection uh, around those logs. Not really sure this subject will teach you that. Let's have a look. So the second part of the subject to introduce methods from machine learning, specific unsupervised machine learning technique. Well, great. I mean, it's good to know what machine learning is, uh, uh, but unless you're going to work with a company that designs machine learning or create machine learning algorithms, which are usually in the US, not in Australia, I don't see this subject being very relevant. Uh, again, it's a really good subject if you want to work in research. Um, but as the masters of IT that claims to be a technical track, this does not look like the technical cybersecurity. E yes, it is technical in the sense it's a programming and uh, hands-on kind of subject. It's not a business subject, but it's not really transferable to someone who wants to get a job in cybersecurity. 
which what the masters should be focusing on, unless you're doing research. What else? So that's it. There are no other security subjects. So this masters of IT uh, is not. I, I cannot recommend this degree to anyone, uh, honestly, just based on the content of it. So, if you want to work in research, just do a master's of computer science. You're better off doing that and just focus on research and go for a PhD. Um, and in this case, I don't see why you would do a master's of IT. You can just do an undergraduate degree in computer science with honors and just focus on the research component. It will be much cheaper. And let's just look at the cost of some of these degrees. So the Masters of IT, Fees and Scholarship. Oh, so this degree cost about 76,000 AUD. That's insane, that's almost $80,000 for subjects that honestly are watered down undergrad sub uh, undergraduate subjects. So I definitely do not recommend this Master of IT to anyone, whether you are an Australian uh, citizen or an international student, this is really where you, this is not really where you wanna spend your money or time on. Again, University of Melbourne is a great university. If you intend to do research, if you're an academically inclined person, uh, if you work in the industry, it's not a great choice. Maybe if you've just finished high school and you want to do a generic IT or a computer science degree, great. Um, but specializing in cybersecurity, uh, I don't think so. The other degree that they have is the Masters of Information Systems, and it's it used to be the only um, sort of security degree they had they had up until two or three years ago. Um, it's really run by I think Dr. Atif and Dr. Sean, and they both specialize in researching what they refer to as security management. I've had an interesting email interaction with them. I was interested in doing PhD and I think they are, um, well long story short it didn't work out but uh, their focus really is on what they think is security management is all about. Um, but that focus isn't really industry. It's more how can we publish research academically that talks about this subject. I mean great, in theory, in practice none of this stuff work. But let's look at the subjects. Again it's um, it's a two years degree if you have no background, one year degree if you've got industry experience, and I think it could also be one and a half year. Again, they've got a research specialization, which I think is their flagship. They're really good at research. I don't think they're good at the industry or the practical aspect of information security. They say it's a business and governance. Um, I disagree. Let's look at the course structure. Course structure. Again, they've got majors, minors, and specializations. Um, they've got a research specialization and a professional specialization. I think if you want to work in research, good for you. Um, I can recommend this uh, course. If you want professional specialization, let's look at it. Let's click on structure. See how hard it is to just see what subjects are there. Uh, I'm, I'm really not a fan of this website. Um, Okay, so foundational core, again, introduction to programming, business process management, foundation of information system. I mean, uh, the, the term information system is really, really outdated. I mean, it sounds like something from the 1990s or even 1980s. No one says information systems anymore. Um, the world has moved on, really. We don't call them information systems. Um, again, this is really core, foundation core. I think is the subjects you do if you're doing the course as a two years course where you know nothing about technology. And I mean, absolutely nothing. You haven't used an iPhone or a computer before. Um, let's look at the lower core. Again, I think that's what you do if you're doing a year and a half. So managing IT infrastructure, IT project and change management, I mean, these subjects are meant to teach you how to manage an IT infrastructure or how to um, conduct change management. I mean, I don't know if I would trust someone fresh out of uni to manage an IT infrastructure or to do project management. I mean, these are more skills you pick up in the industry. You don't really do a degree that will teach you how to do it and you hit the ground running. It doesn't really work that way. I mean, if you're someone already doing these things and you just want to get that extra layer of, I think, academic knowledge, maybe. But if you're someone who just finished your undergraduate, cannot find a job, or you're interested in coming to Australia as an international student, this really is not the degree for you. Again, I haven't seen a single security subject yet. So the entire subject is basically, 
I don't want to say fluff, but it's basically just change management, product management, how to manage applications. Again, nothing really, oh, okay, so there is a subject called cybersecurity management. Let's click on that. One subject in the whole degree. Okay, so it says it will teach you in-depth specialist area of information security management. Don't know what that looks like. Okay, the subject assessment task include writing of comprehensive consulting proposal and research into critical security issues faced by organization. Great. So you're going to be writing consulting proposal and research some topics that companies face. Not what I would call practical. I think it makes for a good homework, but I don't know if this will teach you anything really. Um, yeah, not something I would recommend. Let's look at the rest of the degrees. Again, social computing, designing novel interaction. I don't see any security in this degree. General management, people management, marketing. Yep. I, yeah, so again, it's another degree. Uh, I think, let's look at the cost of this degree. I think it's going to be probably the same price. Fees and scholarships. Yep, it's another $76,000. So I absolutely do not recommend this degree. I know someone who had this degree and they, I think, ended up working in PwC. Um, she had like 10 years of experience before doing this degree. And again, she joined as a junior consultant, have learned absolutely nothing in this degree. So yeah, she said the degree was great, the instructors were great, was great, but when I really grilled down to it, it's more like, you learn how to do homework, you learn how to cram a bunch of subjects and pass multiple choice exams. You don't really learn anything uh, related to cybersecurity. So the conclusion of this, um, if, you, if you're an Australian and you've just finished your high school, you don't know what you want to do and you have an interest in technology, great. I recommend you study computer science in University of Melbourne. You will get an introduction to pretty much everything um, with a huge focus on the academic side of it. If you're an international student, and you're thinking of doing a master's degree in IT, I absolutely do not recommend the University of Melbourne. It's way, way overpriced. Um, you're not going to learn anything useful. If your goal is to work in academia, if you want to do a PhD at the University of Melbourne, great, then maybe do the Master's of Information Systems or an IT with the research specialization. And in this case, you have a higher chance of getting a scholarship for a PhD. Uh, if you plan on working in the industry, it's a huge waste of time and money. There are way, way cheaper degrees um, and training courses and certifications that will give you much more sought after skills. So look, that's the University of Melbourne review. Uh, keep an eye on uh, this series. I will be reviewing more and more degrees, but if you have, uh, if, if you're about to study in a certain university, if you have a specific question about a specific course, please leave it in the comment below. I will look at it and I will respond to it.